What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap. After having full self-driving 12.6.4 on my legacy Model S for a few weeks, we'll take it on the highway and I'll give you my thoughts about the state of it, and we'll also talk about what might be down the pipeline for your first Tesla FSD. Hey guys, so it's been quite a few weeks now that I've had full self-driving 12.6.4 and I've really come to kind of get to uh, get a handle on it and um, you know have some thoughts about how it's performing. Uh, but in the recent videos that I did, I did a video on 12.6.3 and on 12.6.4 and I didn't take you on the place where I think it really shines, which is on the highway. So today I'm going to do a little grocery run here up to a new HEB location in Allen. New for me, I haven't been up there yet, yet and it will involve going on the highway. So I figured we'll, we'll jump on that trip and while we're doing it, I'll talk a little bit about the state of FSD. As you can see here, I'm running version 2025.2.8. I think there's a new version um, on the 2025 branch of course that's coming out but not a new version of FSD it's just a new version of the overall software uh, that brings you know some minor changes hopefully it'll bring a little bit of a better behavior uh, on city streets for FSD but I don't know that it will um, so we shall see we'll just keep an eye out on all that okay FSD is enabled uh, hopefully the camera will stay up for you <laughs> I got a new case and yeah, you know, my setup's not exactly super uh, good for um, <laughs> doing these kind of videos. Like, I don't have a little GoPro with one of those cool mounts or anything like that. So, we'll just do our best here. Got a semi on my left in the middle lane, so definitely don't want to go just yet. Okay, it's a good opportunity to go now. Oh, bad hesitation, bad hesitation. Gosh darn it. All right, we're hitting the accelerator here because that was really, really poorly done. <laughs> Ugh, yeah, that was really bad. Uh, I don't know, this version just has a lot of trouble with hesitation, with getting very paranoid. Like right now, we're going really, really slowly. Um, it's kind of worried about the semi. I don't know what's going on with it. We did not need to slow down quite that much. We could have gone at a the, the jerkiness, right? It could, we could have gone at a much smoother uh, rate of speed slowing down to here. Anyway, um, hopefully you like the views and uh, you're able to see the uh, the cameras over there. I think that'll be kind of cool for you. And um, yeah, so uh, basically, you know, because I'll, I'll probably fast forward to, to some degree for the boring parts of this video because not all of it's going to be engaging and stuff. But um, my basic take home here for FSD is exactly what you just saw, uh, which is it's super hesitant. It um, starts making a decision and then doesn't commit to it and follow through with it. Uh, so you'll see that in the turns like we just saw. You'll also see that with lane changes where it starts making a lane change. Then it says, oh no, and then it goes back and then it tries again. And so this kind of um, lack of, of commit is really, really annoying. Um, not only annoying, but also a bit dangerous because you don't know, it's not predictable for other drivers. And in some cases, uh, it also gets itself into a spot, which is dangerous because if it had just gone, it would have been fine, but then it second guesses itself. And if the, the gap is closing, then now it's a, become a dangerous situation. So on city streets, basically, uh, this version of FSD on legacy Model S and X, uh, some people say it works better on, um, you know, hardware three, model three and why, I don't know if that's true. I don't have one, so I can't test it out. Uh, but on this version, this hesitancy and, um, you know, poor lane decisions and abortive lane changes, uh, is, is really not cool. And, um, I do miss on city streets, at least, uh, in some ways I miss FSD 12.5. Although to be fair, there are some things that it does do better than 12.5. And that is in thinking quickly. So even though it does this weird hesitation thing, at other times I can see that it reacts very, very quickly to obstacles that are in the road. Um, it does really, real, really well with construction situations. And um, oh, I'm glad we didn't hit that guy there. That was not so great. And so it's not like it's, it's all you know, it's, it's not like we just took steps back and didn't take any steps forward on city streets. Uh, but in general, because the issues that are there are so annoying, it does, I think, feel like a step backwards. And, uh, and in those ways, I do miss FSD 12.5 on city streets. 
Now, where FSD 12.6 is a really a big leap forward is here on the highway. And uh, so we're going to be on the highway for a few miles here as we head up to Allen. Uh, it's just, you know, it's nice not mo going from the city street stacks to the highway stack as we merge. Uh, that's a big improvement. Having these different profiles, like I have it on hurry right now, but there's also an average profile and a chill profile. Uh, but the merges are just a lot better. Like this merge that we just did was excellent. Uh, and then the nice thing is that we're going to continue moving on to the next lane uh, very quickly, which was a great move. Uh, so much less robotic than we used to see in the past. And then yet another lane change here, also very appropriate, very smoothly done. So this highway driving is pretty awesome. And um, I don't know, maybe um, somehow like the, the, the optimization or the, the training for highway driving may have caused the detriment in CCC's driving because they tried to keep the, um, the package to a certain size. I'm not sure if that's the issue or, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see what, um, Tesla has up its sleeve in the future, but the AI, I mean, the, um, <laughs> the highway stack is really, really good. So I'm really pleased that anytime I get on the highway, uh, I'm totally happy with the drive. It's just on the city streets that I'm not so happy. And so that's why if you're on X or, um, I don't know, I don't go on Reddit, but I imagine it's a similar user experience. People that uh, drive a lot in their commute on the highway are really happy with this version. Uh, but people that um, do a lot of city seats driving like me, uh, unless they're in California where it's always performed really, really well, um, seem to be a bit less happy with it. And so that's where we're at for me. And I'm really hoping that, uh, that Tesla's going to have a nice update for us coming soon. So again, there's a software update coming up that should be rolling out. I should be able to get it any day now here um, that you know may or may not have some under the hood, uh, undocumented changes. That would be really great to see. Um, but we don't have any word at all right now, and it's been, been quite some time uh, since uh, we got an update for FSD. Um, we don't have any word on any kind of new version coming up. They haven't said, oh, we're going to do you know, version 12.7 for Hardware 3, or they haven't said we're going to bring you up to version 13, which is what all the Hardware 4 cars are on. Um, and those can reverse a little bit so they can do, you know, J-turns and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're not able to do that here with, uh, with Hardware 3 yet. Um, and we also don't still have um, actually Smart Summon uh, for the Legacy Model S and X. Although other Hardware 3 cars do have uh, actually Smart Summon. So a lot of stuff missing. Hope we're going to get it. Especially, um, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time. So Ashok had said that we would get um, actually Smart Summon in Q4 of 2023. And here we are at the end of Q1 of 2025. So, you know, nothing yet. And they're, they're three months behind on that. Now, not a huge surprise for Tesla to be a bit behind on stuff, uh, but they usually do deliver in the end. So we'll, we'll see. I do hope that's going to be the case. So yeah, nice, uh, nice lane change here. Just moving into a faster lane, I think, even though uh, we don't, I don't think we have an exit coming up too soon. Uh, we don't have the nav directions up there. That's the only drawback of putting up all these cameras, but I wanted you to see the repeaters and the rear view as well. So I think that's pretty cool. We are again in hurry mode and uh, there's a good amount of traffic, unfortunately. So we'll see. Uh, FSD might decide that we want to change lanes again because now the lane that we moved into is a slow lane. That's always how it goes. Um, I usually tend to just stick in the left-hand lanes and you know not not bother so much with changing lanes all the time. But uh, overall, really really happy with the way uh, this drives on the highway. I also haven't been having any problems with missing exits, uh, which was a thing that I used to have. Oh, very smooth again, wonderful lane changes. This thing's really good about that. And um, so far on the highway, I haven't noticed to do it in a way that um, would cause anyone to be uncomfortable. You know, um, we're not cutting anybody off is what I'm saying. So really good. Ooh, Ionic 5, kind of fun to see those, those cars out on the road. That's more like it. Here we go. Now we're going 69 uh, in a 70. So really good. Keeping pace with traffic quite well.
Yeah, I'm really, really hoping that uh, Tesla's got something up its sleeve here. Uh, although, you know, one thing is that they are planning to do initial robo taxi rides here with the uh, cyber cab is what they call it uh, which is a small vehicle that they unveiled last year uh, it's going to be completely driver uh, driverless in fact no steering wheel uh, it's a two-seater and then with room for cargo okay here we thought about changing lanes but then that guy was changing lanes so we gave up and then thought about it and here we go so this was not that like a board of lane change thing that we have on city streets this is much smoother and better and look at that, now here over into this lane, which is good because we're going to be taking an exit pretty soon. Uh, and then now thinking, oh, well, we still have time. And uh, there's all these cars here <laughs> smoothly crossing two lanes. Wow. Yeah, I didn't expect that. So, you know, I've got it on hurry. So we're doing more lane changes than we probably need to. Uh, but I don't mind as long as we, uh, we make our exit. And I really do think that we will. So <laughs> fingers crossed on that. Uh, we'll keep an eye. But as I was saying, uh, Tesla's probably putting a lot of AI training effort uh, into that cyber cab that is really kind of a huge product that they want to get out there. Um, they do also want to wake up the fleet, of course, uh, meaning, you know, all these older cars, make sure that they can also be part of the network um, and be put on ride hailing as well. So we'll see. Um, yeah. Just uh, time will tell whether or not Tesla is able to, uh, to deliver uh, the way that they want to. But I do remain hopeful. I'm not sure they're going to make that June target <laughs> for the launch. But anyway, it'd be good to see something happening uh, over the next few months anyway. You know, as I look back on it, it's uh, not all that long ago that... Uh, Tesla was, you know, had FSD and beta, and the UI was totally wonky, and uh, it was not a very good driver, <laughs> you know, not a very good driver at all. And since that time, they've done so much, you know, they went from uh, this hard coded stack to starting to add in all these neural networks and uh, really ramp up their, their training cluster. And so, FSD now, I think, uh, you know, from to hear what folks say on version 13 on hardware four cars is in a really, really good state. And uh, here on the highway, and uh, in many cases, you know, aside from these kind of bugbear, uh, yeah, bugbears that I have uh, with FSD uh, on city streets, it's still it's still pretty incredible, really incredible. So here we go, as uh, we were hoping and suspecting. Looks like we're going to make our exit just fine here. So that exit is coming up. And everything went nice and smoothly. Oh, I don't know what's doing that. Oh, okay, okay. So we, we took the wrong exit, and then I was trying to get back onto the highway. And uh, <laughs> um, I, I aborted it because I didn't, I didn't like what it was doing. I didn't feel comfortable. Uh, so now let's see if we're able to recover. Looks like we got a little roundabout here. And we'll see how, how uh, it does. I probably should have let it just do its little recovery there. Ooh, we got a car coming. I think it's got room to go. Yep, she does. Little old lady here <laughs> with her giant sunglasses. Those are always kind of fun to look at. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, just fine on the roundabout. And here we go to continue straight. And so, yeah, while the... Uh, the next exit would have been better. This is going to be just fine. It's not really going to cost us much time at all. So not a big deal. But that was an error uh, that it did try to correct. And then it was my fault that it wasn't able to correct it. At the same time, though, those were solid white lines. And you're not really supposed to jump across like that. Whoa, this guy's driving kind of aggressively here. <laughs> Jeez. It's the, uh, the Volkswagen behind us. Objects are closer than they appear. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Kind of excited. HEB is a very, very popular uh, grocery chain out here. Has kind of, I think, the same sort of feeling that uh, Market Basket has up in, the, up in New England. known for treating its employees well and 
having good quality for the price that kind of thing. Here's that hesitancy I'm talking about, but uh, eventually did make the lane change on the second go. But it is annoying over time, you know, you want just to you know, pick the right moment, commit once it's going to do it, right? There was really no reason to abort that one. So, yeah. All right, I think we're almost there. Lots and lots of Teslas around. If I find one, I'll probably try to park next to one just to uh, increase the sort of camera coverage. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, you've probably seen all these uh, sensational news stories of uh, people keying or, or damaging uh, Tesla cars, which is Pretty crazy considering that uh, as an EV, <laughs> uh, you know, Tesla owners have historically all been largely quite liberal because, uh, you know, there's an environmental component to it, right? Um, so, yeah, it's kind of nuts that uh, sort of liberals are now drawing swastikas in other liberals' cars. It's a <laughs> really crazy situation here. So, yeah. Anyway, um, it's, it's obviously a small proportion of the population that's doing this kind of stuff that, um, yeah, you know, it is a felony, <laughs> can be a felony in many places. Uh, so yeah, not a, not a good idea to be doing that, especially in a car that has eight cameras on it and has sentry mode. All right, here we go. We made it. I'm going to take over and uh, find a spot to park on my own. Looks like there's some good spots over there. Oh, got a car coming. Makes the situation a little bit trickier. I don't know exactly what he's doing. So whatever, I'm gonna park. I'm gonna just back up here. Oh, he was probably waiting to see where I was gonna go. So one of those games. Here we go. We could have used auto park, by the way, just to, you know, <laughs> increase the amount of self-driving action. Uh, but I do find it to be kind of slow. It does a decent job. Uh, but it is a little bit slow. So there you go guys, we made it to our destination here at HEV using full self-driving 12.6.4. Uh, the only issues we had again were on that first right turn uh, where we had that hesitancy, always a, um, a kind of a long-standing issue that can happen here with uh, with FSD. Uh, and then the second one was where it it, uh, it took the wrong, uh, it was going to take the wrong exit and it tried to correct itself, but it would have been an e illegal maneuver to do that crossing the white line. And so um, I didn't let it do that. And uh, well, I also got confused too. I wasn't sure what was going on. But in any case, um, you know, so not perfect still, obviously, we, we still have issues, um, but a lot of the driving dynamics were really, really good um, other than the, those two issues. But still at the same time, if we're going to say, all right, is this a robo taxi? Uh, no, <laughs> these were, um, I guess it, it probably would have worked out okay, but it would have been uncomfortable and annoying and that's not the kind of thing that you'd like to see in your robo taxi so yes it could have made the trip uh without my intervening at all uh but but again i don't think that we'd give it really high marks as a robo taxi just yet and i hope that tesla will be bringing in some more updates uh, that will improve the experience in the future hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please hit the like button and consider subscribing thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video